Hello and welcome back everybody. We find ourselves in the middle of Iron Hearth Hall, the second bonfire on the way to the old Iron King, deep below the waves of lava here in the Iron Keep. And right now, we have quite a low account of souls, especially after those two bosses, because I went back and specifically spent all of those souls in order to grab myself 100 agility. That's going to give me an extra two iframes in my rolls and mean that I'm going to be much safer for the rest of the run. Run in, and with the plus one craftsman hammer, these guys die to a pair of hits, even, ooh, so long as one of them's a counter hit. Uh, but even when you just have the base strength to wield the craftsman hammer, so it works really nicely at taking out those massive ironclads. It really is just the epitome of the everyman's strength bludgeoning weapon. So if ever you have a chance to use it for your playthrough, or if you just need some bludgeoning damage on a non-bludgeoning character, get yourself up to 10 strength, upgrade that baby a few times, maybe just like one twinkling titanite, and you are set. But let's tag in this Ferris Lockstone. This will open up the way to the... Let's see, what is it called again? You know, I don't even remember what this bonfire is called, but it's the challenge path here in the Old Iron Keep. It is the way to, oh, that's right, the Belfry Sol, which is the Bellkeeper Covenant location here in the Iron Keep. And while I'm not going to use it, it's always nice to have the bonfire there as an option for when I do eventually come back to this area, because... There's a very nice set of drops down that way that I'm going to want to pick up at one point or another. Let's switch back to my Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. And I am actually going to use the Jester Tights for one last thing because they help reduce fall damage. And in order to escape without actually warping back to the bonfire, you do need to use those to reduce the fall damage. But now let's swap back to the... Mage Skirt. I've got the Jester's Gloves on because they give you 10% extra souls with everything. Ooh, wait a minute. Before I come out here, do I have anything that would be better for this? No, I think the Spear should do its job. It's just I need to be really on the ball. There we go. One, two. Okay. That killed the little bugger. And now I've got the second Titanite chunk I'm going to need to upgrade this Spear to plus eight. It's already at a nice... Hefty plus seven, but that extra chunk will be enough to get it that last little way to plus eight. At which point it's going to need the same amount of Titanite all over again in order to reach plus ten. So that's going to be a while. Meanwhile, this guy is hiding over in his corner, being all antisocial. No matter for me, I just stab him a few times. Problem solved. See, isn't stabbing people such more antisocial behavior? Not really sure who's to blame here, but... Uh, no, we didn't manage to jump that trap switch, but... It's okay, because we shouldn't need to go back there anytime soon. Unless we actually want to grab either that item there or the chest. And come to think of it, since I know that one of them's an important pyromancy, we probably will have to come back at one point or another. But that can wait until later on when we've gotten a few more fire defense items and... Preferably at least one of the uh, fire rings. Red quartz rings? Yes, they're red quartz rings. Heal myself up these last two times, and we should be ready to ascend the ladder. I can just leave that ironclad there since he's not hurting anybody, especially me. Meaning I can just head right on up and not have to deal with any of the other guys. That fog wall that he's guarding is actually completely optional and the item behind him is just a soul so it's not of particular use. Stab this guy a pair of times and he goes down giving me the lightning winged spear which is actually not that bad for my build to be perfectly frank but at the same time it's completely unupgraded which versus a plus seven is just never going to compare ever. And so I can Safely ignore that, grab up the last bit of loot, and head on up this ladder. We're going to be coming into an ambush of three Elan 
captains, all with their great bows trained on my position. But so long as we make sure to go around and take them out one at a time, we should be okay. I want to see how this does versus them. Three attacks doesn't take them out. Four attacks does, which is less than my winged spears. Five attacks needed to take them out. Wait for him to get caught up in an animation. Come around behind. Get the blind backstab. It's, it's a bit easier, I'll admit, with enemies that are this big and tall. I'm just gawking there. Let's see if I can get the parry. I cannot. Let's see if I can avoid dying. I can. One, two, three. Okay, there we go. He does die. And that means I can loot the area for this Black Knight Great Axe, which is never going to come in handy for pretty much anyone. It's one of the worst Great Axes in the game, and that's saying a lot because there are some pretty terrible Great Axes here in Dark Souls 2. Generally speaking, any sort of Great Axe is going to be really slow and cumbersome, but the Black Knight Great Axe and the Crescent Great Axe or, no, I believe it's actually just called the Crescent Axe, it's just classified as a Great Axe, are both absolutely terrible, because what they make up for with range, they lose in both terms of damage and uh, just functionality. They're both absolutely terrible weapons that swing pretty okay and have an interesting moveset, but they just do so little that it's almost never worth it. the... Uh, cost of using them when you could just do better with a different bit of equipment. I would normally completely sprint past that guy since he can't actually turn fast enough to follow you down here, but I wasn't sure that I would stick the landing so I didn't want to test my luck. Roll back on out and I'll come in with the heavy attack just to make sure we got the clincher. This guy, I think I'm gonna kill him the regular way. I've kind of Got it down to a science of how to lure him back into the guillotine. But I'm just going to take him out the regular way since I don't want to fiddle around with that method. These flames are a bit tricky in that they actually pop up uh, much later than the actual... I mean, much earlier than the actual damage frames come in. And they also fade much slower than the actual damage frames. So... The first and last little bits that they are spewing from the spouts don't actually damage you at all. And so if you've got the timing down pretty nicely, you can make it look like you're running through the fire, at least for a short while, without taking any damage whatsoever, which is what I pulled off there. I'm going to completely remove that Craftsman Hammer from my inventory since the last ironclad in my way should be a breeze to juke, meaning that I can... Head right on down, and I'm going to be coming up against the Old Iron King himself in just a moment. The Old Iron King is a particularly vicious ruler who is completely analogous to the Four Kings from Dark Souls 1, in that he ruled his kingdom with an iron fist, he preyed upon his subjects, he his whole kingdom was friggin' drowned for that matter, but there's just so many different corollaries. Some people... I actually like to compare him to Gwyn because of the whole fire motif and the fact that he's a king, but that really, really falls apart, especially when you look at the items that you can craft from his soul. In New Game Plus, uh, New Game Pluses, where you can actually get his soul of the ineffable, you can tell for quite certain that he is an incarnation of the iron, not the iron, but uh, of the four kings because of the fact that his soul crafts into two explicit... Uh, I have the binoculars still equipped. Oh, that was horrible. Specifically, the Blinding Bolt Miracle and the Old Dragon Slayer Spear, both of which are related to Gwyn partially, but at the same time, if you read into their context, they actually make a very uh, damaging case against it being Gwyn, who is reincarnated here as the Old Iron King. Oh, no, I wanted to Estus, because I'm kind of running low on health. Get some bearings on where my position is. When he goes into that flame attack, you can, you can get some extra damage on his hands, but I like to just play it safe right now. 
No, back to playing it safe. As I was saying, it forms both Blinding Bolt and the... Would you stop? <laughs> and the Dragon Slayer Great Bow, which is... Oh my... If he would stop using this attack, I could actually fight him, but if he he's going to insist, isn't he? Anyways, the Dragon Slayer Great Bow was a weapon specifically used by Gwyn's subordinates. Gwyn himself used massive lightning spears that he shot from his hand, the old lightning... Is he really just gonna lock himself into a, this animation every single time? There we go. Now he's repositioning, and I should have a chance to actually damage him some. But the other... Sorry. The Dragon Slayer Great Bow was only used by Gwyn's subordinates, and as such has no actual connection to Gwyn himself, especially if you consider an item being made of his soul. Oh dear. This may have been a mistake, but I think that if we're right here, he can't blow fire at us. There we go. Uh, I take the claw to the face, but... I can still come back in for more damage. Unless he does that. As I was saying, the Dragon Slayer Great Bow is specifically connected to Gwyn's subordinates, and as the Four Kings were actually Gwyn's subordinates, given a fraction of his soul, it makes perfect sense that when their soul is crafted into an item or weapon, that it be one of Gwyn's subordinates. Further, Blinding Bolt was a horrible mistake of Gwyn's that he sought to rectify by banishing it just as he banished the four kings when they succumbed to Kath's sorry, to Kath's influence down in New Londo and brought about the reign of the Dark Lurker not Dark Lurker, but the Dark Stalkers and Dark Wraiths down in the depths of New Londo. A human city, in fact. A human city of the undead where all dark and horrible things were cast aside. And so, if you think about the context of those items, neither of them actually pertain to Gwyn himself, but rather to those he recruited. And in fact, any of the ineffable souls can be directly linked to one of the four end bosses from Dark Souls 1. All the great Lord Soul fragments that you place into the Lord Vessel compare directly to the souls of the ineffable. The four kings are reanimated as the old Iron King, the, not the, but uh, the Witch of Izalith is reincarnated as the Lost Sinner. Seath is reborn in a version of himself in the Duke Seldora, and partially Aldia. There's a bit of a confusion there, but uh, suffice it to say, the Duke Seldora is the best correlation to uh, Seath, given the souls theory, the Lord Soul fragments that were placed into the Lord Vessel at the end of Dark Souls 1. And finally, Nido compares very directly to the Rotten. Very many people have picked up on that, but it's so often that I hear people confusing Gwyn and the Four Kings with... Uh, the old Iron King, but I feel it just needs to be said. I do want to wake up this here statue, this ashen idol of sorts, wait for it to do an outcry, and then put it in the ground, just so that I don't forget on coming back here. I like to make sure that I take care of this thing whenever I come here, make it out of the way, and... Oh lord. These things are freaking creepy in first person. This is... I'm not so sure I want to approach any of the other Ashen Idols. That's downright frightening, but no matter. Now we can leave this place and never come back. At least until later. Here we are in Majula once again. Time to spend our souls and determine our next course of action. We've got several places we could go, but right now we're in a state of flux. We can decide for ourselves which path we'd like to head down. Oh, I really want to get Faith all the way up to 22 so that I can use the new chime because it's actually much better than the chime I have currently equipped. So I am going to pop a usable soul. Old Iron King? No, I can't use that. Yes, I can. It's for a strength weapon. I was thinking of the Smelter Demon's soul. 
which I would actually want to be saving for later. So let's pop that on up, level ourselves up, and did we grab any Estus Glass Shards? I don't think we did. Shouldn't matter anyway. Let's see, where do I want to put those other... Let's, let's get some Dark Bonus going on in here. We're supposed to be a Dark Sorcerer of sorts, but we've just been investing in healing and miracles because it's been convenient and it's been immediately applicable, but I think it's time we start switching to a more balanced route, so let's head that up. And I think that we're going to be ignoring the gutter for now. That's a silly place. No one ever goes there. Let us, let us go somewhere else. We're going to be heading on into the Shaded Wood, and as such, I'm going to head right on over to the Old Acolair, and once I've reached the bonfire there, I'm going to quit out and head on to make another episode. So, just this final encounter. Have I opened the way here before? I think, no, I was wondering because I actually have, there's no Benhart here anymore. But that's just because I killed him in order to purchase his Parma, which I immediately ditched for this wonderful Cursed Bone Shield, which is my favorite drop in the entire game. Oh my goodness. This thing is so good on so many levels. It has a higher base physical resist, still upgrades with... Does it upgrade with Twinkling? I don't, I don't even recall. It doesn't matter. It's still the best. Uh, it upgrades in whatever fashion it likes, and it has Spell Parry and small shield animations, and has just ridiculously high defenses. Look at this thing. It has 80s, 5s, and 70s across the board for every single main sort of damage we're going to come up against. The only things it's not good against are bleed and poison, and the chances of that coming up outside of PvP are just completely negligible. So it really is just one of my favorite items in the entire game. It's hands down the best small shield no questions asked and really it's just oh no no ah <laughs> uh, i pulled the lever and forgot about the ambush how did i forget please ignore whatever you think just happened clearly i came in here fully expecting there to be an ambush and prepared myself accordingly the moment i pulled that lever yes that is my story and i am sticking to it so Quite an easy encounter here, as you can see, you just walk backwards, poke forwards. Ooh, no, 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 what's going on? Somehow, the basilisk stuck me in place for a moment, but it's no matter. I can easily roll away with all my stamina and come back in for a few taps here and there. There we go, easy counter, you see, encounter, you see? No problem. Let's tag the bonfire here, and this is going to be where I'm cutting it. So thank you all so much for watching. I've been really having fun with this mod. It's been so difficult of late, but I'm working with it. I am killing the bosses I need to. I'm taking care of business, and everything is working out great. So once again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. And I'd love to engage with you down in the comments below if you have anything to say about Dark Souls or any of the lore and perspective that I bring up in these episodes. So thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.